Hello and welcome. This video is about PID controller, why we need it and how to implement it inside of the microcontroller. Regarding the hardware I'm using, I have a motor with an encoder, uh, the microcontroller board and I have an edge bridge to run the motor. So I, I connected the power supply, 9 volt power supply and the motor to this uh, edge bridge board and from the microcontroller side I have two signals. One is a PWM signal to control the speed of rotation and another uh, to control the direction of rotation. So inside of my code, I measure uh, the velocity of the motor using the encoder uh, um, and uh, plot it using the timeline graph. So you can refer to my previous video if you want to know more about it. So when I send a PWM signal with a constant duty cycle, I expect that the velocity would be constant. So if I resume the code, as you see, we have this uh, velocity, constant uh, velocity. But this is not the case in real life, because if I uh, apply some, um, some friction to, to the motor, um, the speed is decreasing, as you see. And if I switch off everything and plug it again, most probably I will get the different value. Uh, this is because uh, the speed of rotation also depends on the voltage level of the power supply. So there's a whole bunch of parameters that affect the velocity of the motor. So we cannot just send the signal and expect the correct result. Uh, this is not going to work in the real life. So this um, naive approach uh, is called open loop control. When we have a plant, in our case, edge, bridge, motor, everything that our system possess, and, and we have a, a motor velocity as an output, and we cannot uh, co control the output using this open loop system. Instead of it, we need to use a feedback. Uh, or in other words, um, closed loop control. So we have the plant, uh, we have the output, and we measure it using some sensor, in our case, the encoder. Also, we have the reference value that we want to achieve. So we take the difference between the reference and the actual value, so we have the error. So the main component in the closed loop control is a controller. And there's a whole uh, science um, which called uh, control systems to design proper controllers. And in this video, we're going to cover basic but still widely used uh, controller, PID controller. So when using the uh, feedback control, we uh, dynamically change the input to the plant to minimize this error. So let's talk about the PID controller. Um, so PID stands for proportional integral um, derivative. So it has three, three components. So uh, the first component is we take um, this error and we multiply it by this uh, constant gain. So this is the proportional gain. And it's quite easy to understand because this component uh, linearly uh, dependent on the output error. So more we have the error, more we put uh, energy to the system to minimize this error. The next component is an integral when we take the um, integral of the, of the error and we multiply it again by some constant gain. So uh, unlike in the proportional gain, uh, the output of this uh, component uh, depends on uh, past values of the error as well. Last but not least, we have the differential gain. When we take the derivative of, of the gain of the error and we multiply it by some um, constant um, gain as well. So in the end, we uh, sum all these uh, three and we get the output of the PID controller. And um, when implementing this approach inside of the microcontroller, we can use this uh, pseudocode. Uh, so we first define the coefficients, the, the gains. Then we have these uh, variables uh, to keep track the sum and old value of the error. 
So uh, when we apply, we just update the value of this variable. We just add error and we compute the output of the PID. So we take this error, we multiply it by the proportional gain. Then we uh, multiply sum by this uh, integral gain. Also, when um, um, implementing this um, uh, PID in, in a digital system, this DT becomes a sampling period. So we also need to multiply this by the sampling period as well. And when computing the differential gain, we just take the difference between the new and old value of the error. And instead of DT, again, we substitute the sampling period. And we update the old, er uh, old value of the error for the next iteration. So let, so let me show how I implemented um, uh, the PID controller inside of my code. Um, so I update the encoder, I measure the velocity of, of the motor, then I apply the moving average filter before, um, before using the PID controller. And it's pretty straightforward. I have this track for the PA, for the moving average filter. And every time when I uh, apply a moving average filter, I just call this function. So um, I add um, input uh, to, to this uh, member of this track and I uh, subtract the oldest uh, value in the buffer. Then I update the buffer and the output of the moving array filter is equal to the sum divided by the length of the filter. Um, so I apply the moving average filter, and if uh, at least one of the uh, gains of the PID is not, is not equal to zero, I apply the PID. So here I have another struct for PID. Um, so we have three uh, members for three gains. Then we have these um, members for um, for uh, keeping track the integral of the error and uh, and the last error. And and when I apply the PID, uh, I, I I just call this function and and it, and this this code this piece of code is quite similar to the code. Uh, to the pseudocode that I showed you, uh, except I set a um, uh, limit to the integral part because when you integrate, the value might become really huge. That's why we have these limits in order to avoid the saturation of the system. And then I apply the PID. Um, everything is pretty similar uh, to, to the code I, that I showed you except uh, instead of the sampling period, I use the sampling rate, the frequency, which is kind of just flipping the value basically. Then I have another limit for the output of the PID as well. And um, I just update the uh, old value of the error for the next iteration. So um, I have, so um, I can, I apply the PID and the output of the PID becomes the duty cycle of the PWM signal. And here we have another pin to control the direction of the rotation. So when I run the code, all uh, PID gains are equal to zero. That's why we are inside of this else statement. So we have just the constant duty cycle and we don't have any PID, as you see. But uh, I also uh, configured the external um, interrupt. So when I press the button, this callback function will be invoked and this uh, gains will be set to the PID. So what happens is that when I press the button, um, the value of the uh, the, the velocity of the uh, motor converge to the reference point, which is 40. Um, so I can show it here. So um, we have the reference signal and minus the actual value measured by the encoder. So this is basically the, the error. So um, the reference value is equal to 40. 
so uh, right now we have exactly 40 I guess so it is ev everything is working pretty well and interesting thing is that if I apply some friction as you see um, um, PID controller is putting more energy to keep this uh, velocity uh, to keep uh, this uh, reference value I think it's pretty cool so everything is working pretty well the next step I'm going to show how to tune PID or in other words how to set proper gains also I, I will explain how each gain affects the performance of the system so um, don't forget to subscribe and press the like button see you soon